Hello, Nick. Could you give an introduction about yourself? Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, my name's Nick. I'm located an hour north of Toronto in Canada. Um, I joined the real world about eight months ago. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I, I got into the real world. Um, I always heard Tate clip about it and all that kind of stuff. I was always kind of skeptical on online courses in general. It just it wasn't just the real world. Uh, shortly after my father passed away, I was kind of in a bad space motivation wise with business and all that kind of stuff. So I decided I need something to kind of pick me up and kind of give me that push to get back to where I wanted to be. And I joined Hustlers University and within probably two days of being in the course, it felt like a fire was lit back under my ass. It kind of gave me that drive to get back into dedicating more time and energy and seriousness into business instead of just letting the world kind of float me around. Right. So your yeah, follow boss and you're saying was a, a very rough time for you as expected. Um, and the real world gave you the direction after that. How long after did you join the real world from that event? Um, I would say it was within a month and a half. Mm -hmm. About a month after I started looking for options, I kept seeing the real world pop up. I watched a lot of tape clips and stuff like that just because on mental health and especially relating it to with their father passing away, I found a way to, uh, I felt a good relation and a strong bond between their message and what I was looking for. And from there, I was like, if I'm struggling in business, why would I not take business advice from these guys mm -hmm. if I'm taking advice on my own mental health or my own family situation? Right. What part of his message resonated with you for helping overcome the grief? The most would be seeking brotherhood and just surrounding yourself with positive people. And if you build yourself a strong unit, that nothing can stop you. Like the relationship he has between him and Tristan, like that bleeds through and you can see that, uh, it, it, it amplifies both of them in their own way. Like it's not a two X because there's two people it's a hundred X because the way that they can backbone off each other. And it showed me that seeking relationships like that, like strong brotherhood rooted relationships was the right way for me to go. Mm -hmm. And like, even as a smaller side joining hustlers university, one of the big things I noticed was the networking within the uh, chats I've done. I've tried one other course since and the relationship that I see in there and the motivation that guys give one another is second to none. Mm -hmm. What do you think causes that the difference in community within the real world compared to pretty much anywhere else on the internet? Leadership. Is it I think leadership comes down to the main point. Uh, when you have strong leaders that are genuinely invested in your best interests and want to give you the best tools to perform the best job and live your best life, I think that bleeds through and I believe that's the foundation of any good community. Mm-hmm. Okay, so since community, you say it was quite a major aspect for you, something you were searching for, how did you find that within the real world? The real world, I found it within coaches that seem like they genuinely care is like the first step I noticed. Uh, the first courses I did was like the introduction, social skills, business mastery and coach Arno, he's the king of corny jokes, in my opinion. But the way that he actually speaks to people, you can see it resonates through and it breeds community, if that makes sense, as well mm -hmm. as Dylan Madden's freelancing course, which I really enjoyed. Uh, just the networking in it and the way that they push people to work together. Like if you're all in this group together, even their Twitter chat, when it's like, go and follow each other on Twitter, like little things like that to help bridge the connection between guys and be like, hey, like support each other through that. It's like, it's astronomical. Right. And since you said you were, Usually you're skeptical about online courses. So what were you expecting going into the real world and how was it different from your expectations? Um, when I joined the real world, like my expectation with online courses was you're just paying for YouTube videos. But the one thing I really took away is it's kind of like reading books in the sense that uh, these courses are like formulated from you A to Z. Instead of when you watch a YouTube video, you're if you're going by the alphabet, you're at B and now you're watching G and now you're jumping all over the place where the real world is very structured beginning to end. This is where you start as in depth as this is what you do day one, two, three, thus far. So it's a very structured content that's easy to follow along. Uh, in my opinion, it's fairly for lack of a better word, it's dummy proof. Like if you just read the words, follow the steps, step by step, I, I don't really see many options for you to fail. Right. And if you do fail, the steps are still there in place for you to uh, recorrelate and get back on the correct path. 
All right. Okay. So in your experience, you mentioned business mastery and freelancing. Were those the two campuses that had the most impact on you or did you get into other campuses? As in, how, has, how have things developed? How have they benefited you? Is where I'm yeah. Getting. Um, so when I first started, I did business mastery, social skills, and um, I can't remember the name of the campus, but it was the breakdown of the old tape videos. I believe there's a hundred of them and we're... That's also business point. mastery. Okay, so yeah, through the Business Mastery Campus. So that alone, the principles and all that, some of them were new to me. Some of them were things I was doing, but I wasn't conscious of what I was actually doing to do these. And becoming conscious of them allowed me to accelerate the skills, like whether it was socializing with people or sales or something like that. Before you kind of, when you first get into sales, you kind of feel like you're BSing and you're just making it up on the fly. But then you realize that it's not really making it up on the fly. It's training yourself to be prepared for these situations. So they feel natural and it feels like it's coming off the top of your head when you're genuinely are prepared for it. Mm -hmm. uh, the okay. freelancing okay. campus, uh, going through it with Dylan Madden. <clears throat> At the beginning of the course, he kind of gives you a list of all the different things that you can think about offering. And for myself personally, I went through the list and uh, I got lost in the sauce. So I'd start with one and I'd do it for a day or two. And I wouldn't really like it, so I jumped to another one. But the one thing I noticed, like it was me teaching myself through it, was I kept looking at all these different offers and I kept building websites for them all. So after a while, I got into it and I was like, I'm an idiot. Why don't I just make websites for other people? Because that's going to translate directly to this same course. It's still relevant and uh, it, it's what I'm doing anyways. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and you say it's what you're doing anyways. Could you explain a bit more? So what do you... What's your experience? What field did you work in? And did that correlate to what you're doing now? Or are you doing something different? Yeah, so um, like a little bit about my work history. So for five, six years, I was a drywall finisher. Uh, that's just putting mud on drywall, finishing it up. I did that for a while. Towards the tail end of working for someone as a drywaller, I started to become very depressed, I guess, with my situation. I was really seeking to be around people that wanted to be excellent, not just running the mills, not just another guy. So with that, towards the end of there, I joined the Canadian Armed Forces. I did two years in the military. Towards the end, my father got sick, and that's why I left. So when I came back from that, this was before the real world, I just started my own drywall business. So that ran for about two months before my father passed away. The third month, I was kind of slow. And then when I joined the real world, I was following these principles, but I started applying them to like my physical construction business. And I was like, this is awesome. And I started making a lot more money. It was way better. And then down there, I, uh, I realized how much you can really do with all the time that you have. So I was like, why don't I make an online business for when I can't go and do construction during the day or at night? So I started a web design and marketing business and that's been very successful too, running the same principles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and in terms of monetarily, how much have either of those made or both combined? Yeah, so construction, construction alone since, let me say, October, like when I kind of got back up on the horse, October, November, I would say I'm about 60 grand in, let's say, seven months for that. And then for the online business, like that's been launched for about two months now, and I'm getting pretty close to 10 on that one. Okay. And where do you see that scaling then, both of those? What are your plans for um, developing them? Well, to be honest with you, my goal is to step away from the construction business a little bit and use some of the same principles that I've learned in terms of subletting work, finding proper contractors, building a team so I can kind of sit at the top, more so than sitting there fulfilling construction work during the day. So I believe the sky's the limit, and the more I put into that, the more I'm going to get out of it. And I believe it's mm -hmm. the same with the... Um, for like my web design and marketing. Uh, I, I think the sky's the limit, to be honest with both of them. Ideally, I'd like to scale them both to maybe 10K a month, see how I'm feeling, see how the time management works with both of them. And then from there, I will decide if I want to keep them both full time or if I want to try and sell one of the businesses or what I think would be the best bet for myself. Good, okay, fair enough. What would you say was the biggest challenge you faced when you were starting out with either the construction business or the other one? Uh, construction business, I think like anything else, like it's about, it's getting your first client and it's building that momentum. 
And to be honest with you, like through the sales course, I realized that everyone has that problem at first. And the one issue everyone has is they don't understand that you have to do something to get the clients. You don't just start the business and things come in. So like uh, with my drywall business, the way the construction industry works is you have union jobs and then you have regular personal private jobs is what people call them or custom work. So I was in the union and to kind of give an example for the union job, you'd make about 30 cents a square foot for drywall, which isn't a ton of money. But I realized through the principles that it, it was like when Dylan Madden brought up being a, a copywriter on Fiverr. You're not going to make a ton of money. You're going to get nickeled and dime. So I realized I had to transition to a way where I can command the prices that I want instead of just getting what's given to me. Mm-hmm. So applying those principles like that went from 30 cents a square foot to I charge up to a dollar, a dollar ten now. And I have people happy to pay the prices because I provide the quality of service. I know how to socially interact and negotiating. I'm not shy to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And how did you get actually get clients for that? Were they people you previously worked for or was it a completely cold lead? Um, so one day I was on a union job site. I finished sanding a house or whatever. They said they didn't have any work for me. So the next day I went home and I realized I have no work right now. So I essentially pulled up a list of every contractor, every home builder and whatnot in my city. And I cold called every single one for a day straight. And then within two, three days, I started getting emails back of people interested in my work. From there, it just kind of compounded and it's honestly built some of the best business relationships I have right now started mm-hmm. with a cold call. Right. Even uh, the person that I'm renting a room from right now, like he's started off as a client. We've turned into brothers at this point and uh, like it's amazing how the relationships transition from a simple cold call to some of the best business partners I've had in my life. All right. And yeah, clearly it requires work to get to where you are at. Some people are yeah. just too anxious to go out and cold call. Maybe it's the rejection or other reasons. So how did you overcome that yourself or is it just not an issue you faced? Uh, rejection? Just cold like rejection. calling. Like whatever, um, what would be the word? Whatever would be holding them back from doing it, whether it's the fear of rejection or any other reasons, did you have some reason where you were unsure of maybe you should, you shouldn't, or were you just completely comfortable doing it? Uh, personally, myself, I think you get to a point where you're just frustrated with your situation. Like for me, it wasn't. I wasn't scared of someone to say no on me on the phone because I know that if you provide a service and you're good for it, there's somebody that needs it. Uh, Mm -hmm. I I think if you're offering something that nobody wants, that might be an issue. But if you believe in yourself and you know you can do a good job at what you do, I don't think there should be any fear of outreach or rejection or anything like that. It's just the mindset that somebody just doesn't want what you have to offer right now. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. There's 7 billion people in the world. If you can't find at least one that wants what you want, you don't have the right product. And uh, it, it shouldn't take you months to get your first client, I guess is the best way. If you just sit there for two, three days on a phone and actually genuinely reach out and use your brain to think about who you're reaching out to, I think that anyone can do it. The only roadblock will be yourself, whether you have the motivation to do it or if somebody says no to you the first time, if that means you're going to give up. Mm -hmm. Okay, very well put. And any more to add on insights that stood out to you from the real world, whether it was a lesson or something a professor said, something you saw in the chats, anything? Um. You know what? He's not a professor in the real world, but I am going to call him out. Justin Waller. I uh, I messaged him. He's in the construction industry. I've seen him on podcasts. I followed him for a while now, but he actually gave me the push to get back into the real world. There was a few months when I didn't renew my subscription and I was, it wasn't because I wasn't happy with the product. I was just too busy to take the time. And he was the one in the DMs that just said, why aren't you still in there? And why aren't you continuing to learn? And I was like, you know what? You're There's just no pinnacle in education like there's no reason to say I don't need to learn anymore because that's not true there's always more to learn and even myself now I'm going through all the business mastery courses again and I'm picking little pieces out every time I rewatch these videos that are relating more and they're, they're just embedding the principles deeper in my head and giving me more to reflect on with these principles to better myself yeah. okay and how has your average day changed since joining the real world and how different was it before compared to now Yeah. um, Before I was doing the entrepreneurial thing before my dad with the drywall business, but like back then I kind of felt like I was a servant to whoever I was working for. I really felt 
pl- like I was working for someone but self-employed with the union thing and all that kind of stuff. With these principles, it's kind of given me a more lifestyle-friendly approach to both my businesses. Like even my drywall, I don't go work a nine to five. I tell people that if I have time to do it, I work within my own schedule because I've learned how to get that respect out of other people. Same with my web design business. I uh, I have way more freedom, to be honest with you. I have two children myself, so I have the availability to go see them. I have the availability to go see my mom whenever I'd like, and I can just bring a laptop with me and work. Mm-hmm. So uh, the life, I guess lifestyle-wise and time-wise, it's given me way more time to pursue other things, which is usually just different business endeavors at this point. Yeah. So you spoke about scaling the two companies you have now. What about other goals you have for yourself or that you see your life heading? I need to phrase that differently. So in the short term, medium term and long term, where do you see your life heading? Uh, where do I see my life heading? Um, short term, financially, I want to keep building up the bank account. I guess right now my main ambition is just making as much money as possible. Medium and long term is just building a safety net for the family, for my kids to be able to access anything they want, for myself to access what I want and any of my family to. Um, On top of that, I just enrolled in the fitness campus too with the real world. I want to start following that and pursuing my fitness a little bit better. I'm planning on signing up at an MMA gym around the corner as well. So, uh, But most of my goals are just financial and, uh, and physical, to be honest, at the moment. It's just personal development, I guess, is the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. Okay, makes and sense. hopefully Dubai in December. Pardon? I decided Dubai in December is the goal as well. I have a couple of friends that wanted to go on a vacation to Cuba and go booze it up for a week, but I decided I'd rather go do something that uh, just makes me hungrier. So I'd like to go down there and get a look at what the other, how the world's living, and hopefully it gives me that extra little push to keep working harder. All right. And at some point, maybe move over? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, I definitely entertain that in the long term, 100%. Okay. Okay, interesting. So I'm wondering, did you always have the mindset that you have now? Where did you see your life heading, let's say a year ago? Is it completely different now? Yeah, um, mindset wise, I want to say I've always been pretty resilient. Uh, I'm not looking for pity. I wasn't dealt the best deck of cards from the time that I was born. But mindset wise, it honestly kind of made me more resilient than ever. Um, I find I have pretty thick skin from everything that I've been through and everything that I've learned. So the mindset's always stuck with me. Um, Yeah, that's about it for that. Uh, The mindset I've always had, to be honest with you, the the real world's helped impound it and it's helped me internalize and actually be able to think about the concepts that I practice in mindset instead of just being like, I don't know why these things don't bug me. I've learned, oh, well, this doesn't bug me because of, this it's helped me articulate it i guess is the best way to put it in the minor details okay and then i'm wondering is there any more to go into on the impact that tate has had on you or would you say you mentioned most of that at the start already a lot of it like obviously his business minds are saw or his business lessons are that they're bulletproof they're great they bleed over to any kind of endeavor that you're going to go into uh his mental health stuff i don't think people give it enough acknowledgement because it really is in depth and like the mindset that he pushes men to build is very powerful uh i think it's better than a lot of people that ignore it where his mindset's like ignore your problems his are acknowledge your problems but don't let them blow you up like acknowledge your problems and solve them don't sit there and dawn on them for days and not get anywhere and what would you say to people who say you working so much opening two businesses and trying to yeah work so hard what if that's excessive like they say is it not excessive what if you need time to relax so what would you say to those people um i mean i don't find it excessive because i enjoy it it's not like before i worked eight hour days years ago and i found that like a lot of work and i thought that was excessive i thought that was hell for lack of a better word and now i can work a 14 hour day and i come home and i'm like I worked for myself, I built myself and I'm pushing myself forward. So some people might call it excessive. I, I don't, I don't think there's many other things, like other things I'd really rather spend my time on other than with my kids and my family, of course, but why not just do business? It's fun uh, gamify it. You can find a way to make it interesting for yourself. Right. Yeah, uh, makes sense. And 
it's interesting how that works because you could be working a full-time job for a company and that feels like all oh, those days are exhausting like a nine to five but then when you're doing something for yourself you can just be working from when you wake up to when you go sleep and yeah you feel completely fine doing it it doesn't feel like work and to be honest if you have the right momentum from the beginning and you can carry that momentum mm -hmm. you're excited for everything that comes up you're not dreading a project that comes up you're excited because you got the project it's all right. about the scope that you look at things in Okay, so I'd say I'm happy to wrap up there with my final question. So for people who are unsure about joining the real world, because maybe they think it could be a scam for the $50, what advice would you have to them? Um, just spend the fucking 50 bucks. It's like less than a bar night. It's what you're going to spend on a video game. If you play video games, it's it's 50 bucks it's it, try it out for a month you're not going to lose it um for myself i'm offering the opportunity if people can find me on social media whether it's instagram or twitter if you can shoot me a solid pitch over the dms i'm more than happy to pay for somebody's first three months of the real world if they can't afford it themselves with that i'll provide you with the software you need whether it's a canva subscription chat gpt uh, adobe premiere or something like that reach out to me give me a solid reason and if the reason you can't join is because you don't have the money I will put you in the course. I'll give you all the tools you need and it will show you that given the opportunity, as long as you're willing to like put in the hard work, it a hundred percent works. I, I think it'd be silly if it doesn't or silly if it doesn't for you. Uh, that's very generous of you. Thank you for that proposal, Nick. It's opportunities. I think a lot of people just need to know that opportunities are out there and then uh, they just need to make themselves worth giving the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's, happened to you in your life and now you want to give back or is it just you wanted to give no back? it's honestly the opposite to be honest with you uh i wish there was something like that when i was hurting for money or something like that so i believe paying it forward and recognizing something i wish i had when i was lower on the mountain was there for me i think if i can start to create those opportunities it's only going to help excel more people and uh like build a stronger team better relationships in the long term and selfishly make myself feel good in the process because there's nothing i like more than helping people and seeing mm -hmm. them succeed as well well, wow, so selfish of you, Nick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, very, very nice of you. Uh, so for people who want to contact you for that or just find out more about you, where can they do so? Yeah, uh, I'll plug my work email, nick at builtreach.com. Builtreach is my business. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at nickmaxsocial. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of those three channels, that's all about all I'd really like to put out here. But um, any of those three people are more than welcome to contact me at any time and mm -hmm. give me a solid pitch and we'll go from there. Okay. So well, those will be in the description of the video. Anyone interested, awesome. check that. And yeah, Nick, thank you for your story. Thank you for sharing. Uh, was And yeah, thank you for the insights as well from what you learned in the real world. It was yeah. nice to yeah hear your story. So I appreciate the opportunity to come on here. Cool. And uh, it's... As I said, it's nice to have to listen to stories like yours where you had a rough part and then, yeah, you, you've you done very well since joining. And uh, I look yeah. forward to hearing how that progresses for you in future as well and doing a follow-up to keep you accountable and just seeing where you're at. I appreciate that. I just like to mention too, like a lot of the promotions for Hustlers University is about how much money you can make. I think people should look at it as a tool for socializing and mental health as well. Like, I, I think that's kind of, obviously it is promoted, but it's slept on. And a lot of people say I make enough money. I don't need something like that. There's more to it than just the money. The mindset and like communication skills alone are worth tenfold. It's worth 50 bucks a month for the rest of your life. No problem. Mm -hmm. Very true. And a very good note to end on. So thank you, Nick. Thank you very much for your time, sir. I appreciate it.